Tonight's study of Likute Alochos will be a focus on Hilchas Purim, sixth chapter, and we'll begin with paragraph number nine, number Tess. And if things go well, we'll be able to cover most of the highlights of Tess, Yud, and Yud Aleph. I'm hoping that you were able to benefit from the link that I sent in the email. I would like to begin with an introduction. In Parshas Bo, in Shmos, we have Perak Yud Beis and Perak Yud Gimel. And we want to understand various elements in this parsha that have to deal with Pesach. And that's the major theme of Parshas Bo, Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim, and the Chag Pesach. In Perak Yud Beis of Shmos, there's an entire unit addressing the mitzvah of Karban Pesach. And then, when we move towards the end of Perak Yud Beis, the Torah tells us a story about the money of Mitzrayim. Moshe Rabbeinu asks the people of Israel to borrow kalim, utensils, klizav, klikesef, gold and silver. And the Torah testifies in Pasuk Lamed Hay, Uvnei Yisrael asu kidvar Moshe, the people of Israel fulfilled the request of Moshe, They, so to speak, borrowed from the Egyptian silver, gold, garments. And then the last three words in that posuk is And they emptied out Egypt. And this Vayanatsluis Mitzrayim catches our attention because immediately afterwards, and this is the major theme of the next chapter, which is Yudimel in Shmos, we have the prohibition about Chametz. We had some of that already in Perkid days. And then the mitzvah of Achilas Matzah. Shivas Yomim Tochlu Matzos, Beyomashvi Chag Lashem, Matzos Yachel Shivas Yomim, Lo Yerel Lecha Chametz, Velo Yerel Lecha Siyar Bechal Gulecha. Sandwiched in between Perak Yud Beis and Perak Yud Gimel, between the Perak of Carbon Pesach and Chametz of Matzah, right in the middle we have the story of the Jewish nation emptying out Mitzrayim of precious gold, and silver. If we turn back to the Brisbane of Asorim, HaKadosh already promised Avram Avinu the Achar Kach Yetzu Berchush Godol, that the Jewish people will leave Mitzrayim with great possessions. And we see that there's an exceptionally pr- pronounced or prominent emphasis on B'nai Yisrael and the Rechush Gadol, and acquiring all these possessions. So these are the questions that we're going to tr- hopefully try to address tonight with the Torah of Rabbi Nassan. And that is, what's unique about the Karben Pesach? How does it connect to the holiday of Pesach? And moreover, to the Golos in Mitzrayim, it cannot be coincidental that the mitzvah of Karben Pesach will celebrate the termination of Tolz Mitzrayim. Then we're going to ask, what is the connection between Karben Pesach and Matzah and Chometz? Matzah and Chometz, by the way, are very, very similar, both in the letters that make up these two words and in the physical material entity. You could have something that could be Matzah and then all of a sudden, a matzah, and it becomes chametz. 
And then we want to address the question of Ayinatsulis Mitzrayim right in the middle, sandwiched between the Karben Pesach that celebrates the termination of Golis Mitzrayim and the Parsha of Matzah and Chomets. Why this tremendous emphasis in which the story of the Jewish people taking out the possessions of Mitzrayim becomes almost a hub, the center of this entire wheel of Yitzias Mitzrayim. Why? Why so much emphasis that even as early as the Brisbane of Asurim, when our forefather of Ramavinu finds out about the ultimate goals that we're going to experience is his descendants, it's Viacharkach Yetu Berchut God. Rabbi Nassan here starts with, I would call it almost a bomb. He writes, Ikar Bechinas Pesach, this is at the beginning of number 10, Hulisakin Hashirus. Let's try to understand. Rabbi Nassan is now focusing all our attention on Golis and the purpose of Golis. He calls it Ikar Bechinas HaGolis. Ikar means the primary purpose and the goal of Golis Mitzrayim, he's going to reveal to us. And he reveals it with the word Letake. Let's talk a little bit about that word Letake. Letake means when you have something that has the potential for good, but on the other hand, it's got lots of evil in it. And the two sides that are polar extreme opposites one or the other, what we call in fancy English antinomies, and they both connect to one episode, one enterprise, one experience, one object. And we are called upon, this is our avoda, to do birur. Birur means to select, separate, the evil, and free the enterprise from evil so that now it's tov, it's good. That's called a birur, and by separating the good from the bad, we have what's called tov. We have a tikkun. Tikkun means literally to rectify. So we rectify the object or the experience by removing those elements of ra, and that's called birur, so that we can now elevate the object, elevate the experience as an experience of tov by choosing the good. And the challenge is to successfully do this process of biru because the, unfortunately, the tzada ra, which drags us down, 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 is very powerful. And we have to somehow overcome all those pulls, those gravitational pulls that pull down, 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 through the process of Birur, and do a Tikkun in which the experience itself now becomes Tov, because we've gotten rid of the element of Ra. What is that entity that needs Birur, needs Tikkun, and is the essence and the goal of Golis Mitzrayim? I wouldn't have a clue. I could not even guess how to answer that question. I wouldn't even know where to turn, left, right, center. You're talking about defining the major, crucial, and essential goal of Golis Mitzrayim, Golis Mitzrayim for two centuries plus. And he says that Ikar Bechinas Pesach, this entire celebration of Geula, of redemption from Golis Mitzrayim, is Lesakein Hashirus. It's Tikkun on Ashirus. Ashirus is the opposite of Amirus, and it means wealth as opposed to poverty. And wealth, meaning possessions, money in the bank, silver and gold with which we can buy almost anything we want to, any object on the face of the earth, precious objects, pearls. Gold, silver. That needs tikkun because Ashirus could be a, an experience 
a reality that's full of Ra, that can bring someone really, really down. And we're going to see that Mitzrayim represents Ashirus. It's a very wealthy country, the wealthiest country on the face of the earth, full of deposits and uh, inventories of silver and gold. And that's the Ashiris of Mitzrayim. The Ashiris of Mitzrayim, to some extent, is wealth that was taken from the Jewish people through the act of slavery, of oppression. I mean, Moshe Lamal Dovin Dome, if I can give you a contemporary example in, in the 20th century, not so contemporary, I met someone in a museum in Vienna. Austria, we were both standing in awe, because I'm a big lover of art, of one of the most famous Vermeers. It's called The Painter at His, at his Artwork. It's, a, it's an incredibly beautiful painting. You could probably lecture on that painting alone for hours. And the man says to me, this must have been looted from the Jews. Again, we have no way of proving it. But the Nazis Shimon, took our possessions, not just art. I mean, it's everything. Now, Yosef HaTzadik brings Ashirus to Mitzrayim. And Rabbi Nossin is going to make a gigantic deal about that because it's only due to the fact that Yosef is the catalyst through which Mitzray, Mitzrayim achieved Ashirus, and Yosef gives the Ashirus and all the possessions a personality of Tikkun, of Biru, of Tov, of Kedush, of Sanctity, that's what's going to sow the seeds to make it feasible, to make it possible for the Jewish nation who come down to Mitzrayim after Yosef Atzadik, to succeed in this great challenge of Tikkun Hashirus. Yosef plants the seeds. Yosef sets the tone. La loso mea golus. Now we have a new definition of golus. We think of golus in terms of the Jewish nation finding themselves away from the land of Israel in exile, on a physical level of location. But Gullus, exile is an abstract concept. And it reflects on the power of evil to bring us down. That's what Gullus is all about, both on a national level and even on an individual level. We experience Gullus, each and every one of us. By the force of the Sitra Akra, the powers of evil that bring us down, and we end up in this dark Golos. And now, Golos becomes a challenge to defeat and push out all the powers of the Sitra Akra that are confusing us, that are making life miserable and dark, overcome all that, and then bring out the light of the Ulam. And all this is a process of tikkun, of rectifying, of biru. Because there are two concepts that are mutually exclusive. They're antithetical polar extremes. One is Kedusha, and the other Lahavdil is Tumah. And the Ashiris of Mitzrayim is Tumah. And our job, and this is the entire goal of, of, of Golos Mitzrayim, is to bring out the Kedusha, the sanctity of Ashirus. L'hotzi Ashirus me'a'akum v'arishoyim u'lachniso li'yisrael. We want to get a hold of that Ashirus. But which kind of Ashirus? The Ashirus of Kedusha. And we want to bring it back to us. They're stealing our Ashiras, using it to contaminate the Ashiras. We now have to free the Ashiras, get it back to its original owner, and that's us. 
and then uplift the Ashirus and purify it of all that tumor from the Ov Dei Avodah from the idol worshippers, and elevate it to Ashirus the Kedusha. So the ultimate purpose of Golis Mitzrayim is to elevate Ashirus, clean it and cleanse it of all its contamination at the hands of the Mitzrayim, and take that Ashirus, all those possessions, and uplift them to Ashirus of Kedusha. That's the Tikkun, and that's the goal of Golis Mitzrayim. A mind-boggling finish. Yeah, I, I've been around for a while, you know. I already passed six decades. So I'm well on my way to Emirates to Shem the seventh decade. And I never, ever saw anything like this. To give me a clue as to what Golis Mitzrayim is all about and what purpose is it meant to play and what role are we as the Jews meant to contribute in order to achieve the goal of Golos and then get to the level of redemption, I I was never exposed to this. Maybe, maybe you gentlemen, well, I know Gershon has some threats of a connection, so maybe you've seen this before, but for me, this is brand new. He's revealing an unbelievable secret, and you'll see how it ties together with Karben Pesach, with Matzah, with Chameitz, and with Bnei Yisrael taking all the Possessions out of Mitzrayim. I mean, it puts so many different things that are disconnected. You know, the greatness of Rabbi Nosson is that he has all these dots and he connects them, the dots that don't seem to be related one to the other. We're going to take that Ashirus, which they used, the Rishayim used it for idol worship, we're going to take this Hashirus and we're going to redirect it for Avodah Hashem. Lahagdil Shmam V'nafsham Al By taking these possessions, this wealth, and elevating it by injecting Kedusha to it, we will thereby bring our name on a spiritual level, our Nefesh, our souls onto a higher level. And not only that, but our nefesh is connected to Hashem. Our shame is one with Hashem. Shem Hashem Hamashutaf Bishem Yisrael. Right? Yisrael is Sar Kel. The name of God is right there in the name of Yisrael. Kidei she is avu nefashos rabos li kol b'shem hakodesh, and this is going to, in a sense, arouse our desire of every Jew to be included in that shem kodesh. Bezeb bechinas carbon pest. Now Rabbi Nosson takes us on a journey. What does this new definition? new perspective of, of Golis Mitzrayim and its purpose and its goal, what light does it shed on the central mitzvah of Chag Pesach, namely Pesach, Kishma, Karban Pesach? And he makes an unbelievable point. Karban Pesach Ba Minat Tzon Shehu Bechinas Hashirus we're talking about song. We're talking about a lamb, a little sheep, Shepsala, we call it in Yiddish. And that has to do with Ashirus? He says, if you open up a, a pasuk in Dvarim, Perik Zion, it says, Ashtaros Sonecha. And the Gemar Chulun says, what is Ashtaros Sonecha? Shama Shiros Es Balea. There are so many different things you can do with sheep. When you, let's say, do shechita on, on son, number one, you take its wool and you use it to make all sorts of beautiful garments. Like, for example, in the base of Migdash, to weave big day kahuna or the curtains for the Mishkan. 
You take the skins of son and you make out of it what's called a tof. Tof is a drum. And that tof is used in the service of the Almighty, in the base of Migdos. You take the meat of tzon and you use it for a suuda, for a beautiful meal, for Shabbos, for Yontif, and for Karben Pesach. This means that we can take the tzemer off the back of a sheep, the wool, and we can dye it tcheles and make strings of tcheles for atzitzitz. Look how many mitzvos we can fulfill with sheep, with sown. It's no coincidence there that in Golis Mitzrayim, we're talking about the mitzrayim who misuse the ashiras of tzon. And Chazal tell us that tzon in Mitzrayim was Avodah Zorah. They worshipped the tzon. The biggest challenge for the Jewish people was Ku Mishchul Chem Tzon, when B'nai Yisrael were commanded on the 10th of Nisan to separate the tzon, designated for a carbon Pesach, and take the, go- the idols, the, the deities of the Mitzrayim. And why the Mitzvah worshipping Tzon? Did you ever ask yourself that question? I can think of a million different animals. If you want to worship animals, you want to worship people. Maybe Pyro was a deity, put himself up as a god. But why Tzon? And the answer is simple. Because Tzon represents Ashirus. Ashiros sonechos and mashiros es baleim. And what do you do with wealth? You worship, and isn't that so true? We come from the United States, where money and possessions and wealth are our idols. We worship them; they become the center of all activity, all our hopes, and all our aspirations. It's all about making money. And we respect those who are wealthy. We look up to them. They're on top, on the heart. So it's not coincidental that the idols, the deity of Mitzrayim was sown because sown represents and manifests Ashirus. Ki ikar nefilas Ashirus be Mitzrayim sheshom kol Ashirus. As we said before, the civilization of Mitzrayim represents the Ashiris of the entire world. And again, Yosef is going to play a major role in that. Is Ashiris the Sitra Akram? They use it for idol worship, the worst evil. And Yeshayo Anovi says it beautifully. Hoi, Hayor, the Mitzrayim, Lezra, they go down to the worship and then the idol worshipers, the monasteries. And what do they have for a god? They have Ashiras, they have Tzon. Ki Mitzrayim Meleo Giluim Vavodazor. Vehu Taivas Mama. It's unbelievable how Rabbi Nasan connects together Avodazor and Taivas Mama. And this is way ahead of his time. We know today how, how much people worship money. And how much Ashiris is really Avodah Zarah. It's a different form of Avodah Zarah. There's like a higher calling in life. A deity that goes beyond Chas Vashon, God. It's our own gods. And that's Ashirus, Mamon. And as Shlomo Melch says it beautifully, we'll see Rav Nossin quoting this passage from Koheles, Akesef Yanes Akol. That's the answer to all our problems. Kesef. We could buy anything in the world with Kesem. Why was the Golas, the challenge of Golas, which as we said at the outset, means to free all those potential sparks of Kedusha, of sanctity and Tov. Why is it in Mitzrayim? The answer is, Our obligation, going down to Mitzrayim of Birur, to separate and select good from evil is in Ashirus because 
It is none other than Mitzrayim that represent the epitome, the manifestation of Ashirus Bitumla, Ashirus Davodazara. Money for the sake of worshiping money. The Kesef Ubizar. And now Rabbi Nason invokes what we, you know, what the fancy academicians will call today Lurianic Kabbalah, the Kabbalah of Yariza. And what does the Arizal teach us? That Kesef and Zav, imagine if you would pass by, I, I happened to pass by yesterday, a store that sells silver, you know, Judaica store. It's beautiful. It, it, it like shines, it radiates. Take solid gold. Honestly, we don't have that much. I can't say that we have. But if you look at gold, it's like the light, you know, bounces off the gold. It radiates. Gold and silver. In the Torah of the Arizal, that's called Gvanim Eloim. Eloim means high up. They come from the higher worlds. And you should know, Rabbi Osai, anything that's beautiful in this world, in the physical world, comes from a higher world. It's Shoresh, it's root is up in the heavens. The Shoresh and the root of Kesef and Zav is Gvanim Eloim, beautiful hues, H-U-E-S, colors. They, they just, they're like light that illuminates. But Gvanim Eloim come from a very high root very high shorish up in Shomayim, with tremendous potential. If the wealth comes into the hands of a person who's kosher, and he knows how to use that wealth, he can uplift it to Gvanim Elayim. But now it fell into the hands of the Mitzra. And instead of using the gold and silver as conduits, to reach higher levels in the Shoresh of Gvanim Eloim, they did just the opposite. They brought it down to Tuma. They made it into an Avodah Zorah. And Son becomes the idol of Mitzrayim because that represents Ashiras. And why is it that man suffers so difficult challenges in earning a living. That all is a result of hate. And when Adam Arishon sins out of a sense of desire and he eats from the Eitz Hadas, that's the same identical desire as a person who loves money. And the Mida Kedeged Mida, the punishment for the hate of Adam Arishon, is bezeas apecha tocha lechem. That in order to get money and possessions to sustain yourself and your family, it's going to be very bitter, marirus, full of anxiety, full of worries and challenges. And that's because Adam Arishon did not live up to the beerer. Because when there was creation, there was Shvira Sakelim, and there was Nitzotos of Kedusha that got lost, and he was not able to elevate those Nitzotos of Kedusha. And the same thing applies with financial challenges. Our financial challenges are a result of our own self imposed desire for money and concern and worry about money. We worry about money, we bite our nails about money. And there are people who are addicted to watching the, the market go up and go down, you know, one eighth of a point, and they this and they that. And the Gantz of El, Tutzach, the whole world revolves around money and worries about money. And that's because we are not able to do the beer, the proper tikkun on Ashirus. Ubishvil Zehoya Ikar, Hagolus, the challenge of Golus and Mitzrayim. Mitzrayim, which is the civilization, the cradle of Ashirus, of tremendous wealth. And that's our challenge. 
And when does the Torah reveal the challenge of Mitzrayim? To whom does the Almighty reveal the challenge of Mitzrayim? And the purpose of that goes? Don't only answer it once. To Avram Avinu, back in the Brisbane of Asorim, when Akash Baruch Hu tells Avram Avinu <laughs> that his descendants will be Gerim and Avadim, and at the end of this description, the Achakach Yetzu Berchush Gadol. Why the emphasis we asked at the outset on the Rechush Gadol? And the answer is, the ultimate rectification that we successfully achieved in the goals of Mitzrayim was Masha Beiru, we did the Biru, Vahotziu Hashiras, we ripped the Hashiras from the hands of evil Mitzrayim of the Sitra Achra. We took it out of Tumas Mitzrayim and we elevated it into a level of Kedusha, of Mamon Shel Kedusha, Ashira Shel Kedusha, by getting rid of the stripping and purifying out the, the Tuma in order to select the good, the holy, the sanctified mama. And Rabosa, you know what this means. If we only have the right attitude towards our possessions, towards our bank account, there's so much potential here to reach Kedusha, to elevate something to a passive bureau from Tuma on one extreme to Kedusha on the other extreme. And that challenge faced us in Mitzrayim and the Achakach Yetzu B'chush Godom. Fainatslu es Mitzrayim. However, the Pasik says at the beginning of Tvarim, Vidisa Hav. You remember that Moshe Rabbeinu gives Tokhach at the beginning of Tvarim. Let, let me just see. I'm, I'm at my, uh, my, my neighbor's house. My, my internet went down. Just one second. And what do I do with the phone yet? Yeah, it keeps ringing and I, I can't come. That's why I turned it off. Oh, yeah. I mean, I didn't want to answer the phone because I'm sure it's for you, not for me. Yeah. All right. Okay. I'll call you. Maybe it's from the from this. Maybe it's ringing. I don't know. Okay. Well, we'll survive. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks, Yaku. Okay then. So he writes, "What's Moshe Rabbeinu's?" Criticism, you know, that Moshe Rabbeinu in his rebuke, he says everything in a in an illusion form. You know, he never says it explicitly. So he says, "V'dizahav." V'dizahav is an allusion to Chet Ha'egel. So the Jewish people go out of Mitzrayim. They have emptied Mitzrayim of all its clay kesef clay zav, and they get carried away by the tumor the negative sitra akra of Mammon, and they take gold and they make it into an idol. That's what Chet Egel is all about. Unbelievable. Arab Nassim is connecting all the pieces of the puzzle together. We tried to successfully achieve the Bira and the Tikkun and Mitzrayim of, Kid, of Ashir's the Kedusha. We didn't quite make it. We didn't quite succeed, succeed, as we say in Yiddish and Gansen. It wasn't a total success. And those elements that are negative in Ashirus, they came to the fore in the worshiping of the golden calf of the Egel Azor. What is the Karben Pesach? Karben Pesach represents Tikkun Taivas Mamon, right? Because Pesach is Tzon, Tzon is Ashirus, and now we have to take that Ashirus, which was made into an idol by the Mitzrim because they worshipped the Ashirus of the Tzon, and now we have to elevate the, the, the Tzon to levels of Kedusha through the bringing of the Karben Pesach, which is one of the highest levels of Karbonos that we have. And how do we eat the carbon Pesach? The Torah tells us in this week's Pasha, Pasha's boat, Sli Eish, 
We've got to roast it over a fire. Ash represents lavas ash. When a person has a passionate motivation, inspiration, an energy force, it's called ash, lavas ash. And we want to take our ashirus out of our lavas ash and direct it towards Avodah Hashem, towards Kedusha. V'tzarech levara ashirus mitchilosov yadzofel ha-kedusha ki ha-kesef, as Shlomo Mel says it, yanes ha-kol, kol ha-dvarm shvolom yicholom liknos ha-yidei momon. You can buy anything, except for happiness, right? You can buy anything with momon. U'mizeh nimshach taivas v'chem des momon. What's the root psychologically of our desire, our craving for mamon? Is because if we get kesef, yanes akol, we can get anything we want with kesef. A deep psychological insight here. Avomishi yeshlo das amiti. Now, here's another phrase in the Torah of Breslov das amiti. Das is the way we connect to the Almighty above and we get closer to Him. But it's all through MS. Everything is about MS. It's about being genuine, being truthful, being sincere, and not fooling anybody. And if you're dedicated to MS, to Das or MS, now listen to the next three words. I, I, I hear the next three words, Shlomo Mel talking to me. Sheyodea Shakol Hevel. Now, let me ask you, my friends. Who's willing to tell me, honestly, sincerely, in MS, raise your hand if you think that everything in life is heaven. It's all vanity. And all the paintings you've collected and all the monies that you've earned and all the stocks that you have, hopefully they went up and not down, and the real estate and everything that you have, the beautiful furniture and the great design, you took the top designer, She's the Alufav, you shall lie. And it's all heaven. Raise your hand. I don't see too many hands going up. It's like when Rav Shach said, made a statement. This is about 40 years ago. I remember when I was in Israel. He said, television is the root of all evil. And everyone should get rid of their television. So the, all the reporters after Rav Shach made the statement, they all went out to the streets. Nobody saw one television go out the window. Right? All of life is heaven. So let's throw all that money into it. Ki amomon im kol advorim v'chafotzim sheyikno ayol makol heaven. Why is it heaven? He says because when we get to the day of Emes, yikole v'yoved v'lo yishar mimenu klu. We get, we go back to our roots. Back may offer atol, may offer toshuv naked. With nothing. What do you take with you from this world? Absolutely nothing. The Mishnah says in the sixth parak of Avos, who will escort a person up to Shemayim after 120 years? Lo Kesef, Lo Zav, Lo Avonim Tovos, Lo Margolios, Ela Torah Umaisim Tovim. That's what we have for the next world. And here Rabbi Nossin goes on to say that where do we see the potential of Ashirus? What is the challenge? How do we elevate and beer the Ashirus? And he quotes a Mishnah in Kinim with a Medrash and Rashi's interpretation about the Rachel. Rachel is a sheep. Ha-Rachel azek kulo kadosh. You can take the Rachel and make it completely holy. Rachel, as we said before, represents Ashirus, as we saw Beashtaros Tzonecha. Karna. What do you do with the horns of, of, of a goat, of other animals? Lechatzotzos. You make it into Chatzotzos for the base of Migdash. Oro Litov. Samro Litcheles. It's shorish, it's rude, as we said before, is high up in sanctity. 
When we reveal the sanctity of Tzon, we can make these beautiful, incredible objects. Shem nigudim v'shiros niflos. Bechinas se'u zimra utnu tov. What does se'u mean? Se'u means to lift up. We lift up the tzon and we turn it into zimra. We lift up and elevate the tzon. We convert it into tov. Ve'hu tikun, and now he plays on the word on the word se'u. The word se'u can mean lifting up, but it can also mean masa umatan, which means, how do you say it in English, masa umatan, you know, dealings and merchandise, selling and buying. But what's the word I'm looking for? All these negotiations. What? Negotiation. Nego- oh, I, I thought of that word, negotiations. Okay, so that's the ashiris of Kedusha. And it all depends upon our orientation, our purpose, our goal, our lave, where our heart is. Al Kain Sivsa Torah Bakarm Pesa. Shutikun Taivas Mamon. She nitzla beesh. We have to burn, roast it with a fire, the Karm Pesach. Bishlemus. Rosho, the Torah says, Al Krov Yal Kirbo. Kide Levarer Ula Halos. To elevate Hashira's kula, every dimension of Hashira's, from the top to the bottom, El Kedusha, the Rosh Oviad Raglo. And now we can shed a light on the Iser Chametz, which is so prominent in our Parsha this week, Eric Gimel of Shmos, and the mitzvah of eating mat. Mind boggling how it must ties everything together. It's like He's the master weaver. And it's with Midrashim and Psukim and Rashis and Arizal and Zohars. And it's, it's mind-boggling. It's so fascinating that Matzah and Chametz are almost identical. You can have a mashu of a difference. Just leave the dough one more second to leaven, and it becomes chametz from matzah, which is a mitzvah of achila, to chametz, which is an isakares, is just a mashu. We're in very, very tight straits over here. You know, we're walking a very dangerous tightrope here with chametz and matzah. And what is chametz and what is matzah? And here, we have an unbelievably profound Kiddush of Rabbi Nasser, which is really based on Rabbi Nachman. And that is that Chametz represents Kas, anger. A person expects to be successful in business, and he enters into as Alan said, negotiations, masu matan, and he gets very disappointed. He may be disappointed in a partner or in the firm or in a competitive firm that's competing with him. And he gets angry. Why didn't I succeed? Why didn't I make the money? Sometimes he gets angry at the Rebona Shalom. Why didn't God let me succeed? Sometimes he gets angry at himself. Or more likely his wife, right? You got to blame somebody for your failures. As the Ottawa Rishon said it, And now, the difference between Chametz and matzah, matzah representing that I'm satisfied with what I have. It's pretty posh. You know, stale as cardboard. It's flat. And the more money you pay for it, the less, the less it, good it pays, whatever. But anyway, he says the following. Chametz 
is ches mem tzadi. Matzah is mem tzadi, but instead of a ches, it's a hay. What's the difference between a hay and a ches? They're almost identical. There's only a mashu. So the difference between chametz and matzah, and matzah is a mashu. And the word chametz, in its shoresh, in the root of the word chametz, is chema. Chema means anger. Chametz represents the anger of Taivas Mamon. When a person is so involved in pursuing Mamon, he ends up with chema, with kaas, chas v'shom. And that's chametz. And how were B'nai Yisrael able to overcome the chema and the chametz in Golis Mitzrayim when they were steeped and surrounded by the Ashirus of Sitra Achra? It was because of Yosef. And the Pusik says in Gracious, Hey Lachem Zera. Hey Lachem Zera. This is a statement of Yosef. The hey represents matzah. The hey of matzah, as opposed to the ches of chema of chametz. Hey, let it be like matzah, zera. All that's growing during the seven years of plenty. Bechinas hashpas hashira shehim shech Yosef from Mitzrayim. This is called like Kodesh Baruch Hu's makim refua lemaka. The process of healing preempts the process of, of disease. God gives us the cure before the disease. Emir Sashem. I don't know what vaccination you're up to. A few people told me they're up to number four now. Two of them are going tomorrow for their fourth vaccine. And I asked them, when is the fifth? <laughs> they told me probably in about three months. And it goes on and on. Anyway, getting back, I'm sorry, I got a little distracted here. He says, Yosef had to come down to Mitzrayim first. Yosef is going to bring the Ashiras to Mitzrayim. It's Yosef's mind that elevates Mitzrayim to be the richest civilization on the face of the earth. And therefore, the Ashiras was misgalgil and Mitzrayim and Yosef. Yosef was able to plant inherent in the Ashirus, the Kedusha of someone, a tzaddik who has nothing more to say except for God. That's all he talks about. Anything you compliment him on, he'll always tell you it's God. And even the, the brothers who sold him as a slave, that's also, says Yosef, part of a divine plan. That's the Kedusha of Yosef. Yosef is the manifestation and the personification of sanctity in a place which is completely surrounded. I don't have to tell you about H.S. Potiphar and, and the dungeon that he gets thrown in. Yosef is always surrounded by those who try to drag him down and contaminate him. And he takes Ashirus and brings it into Mitzrayim. And it's only because the Ashirus come from a kosher Jewish source of a tzaddik. Therefore, Yehelahem, the Jewish people have a cough. Al Yedeze Levaro Misham Ulach Zero Lamarakamo to bring and free this mama, these possessions, and bring them back to the original owner, meaning to the Jewish people. Unbelievable. Rabosai, I'm telling you, if you're, if you're not going to jump for joy with me when I tell you this, then forget it. I, I have not succeeded at all. Rabbi Nassan asks the question, why does the Torah call matzah lechem oni? Lechem oni, a poor person's bread. And the answer is that the tikkun of Ashirus is anius. What does that mean? Does anybody want to become an ani? And 
And the answer is yes. We all want to become Aniyim if we understand what the word Ani signifies. Ki ikar tikun hashirus u'anius from one polar extreme to the other from hashirus to anius. The hainu, what is anius? Did you ever hear the phrase lufi anius daiti? What is anius? Misha eno misgoa bedaito. You know, you meet these rich people; they're so full of themselves, and if they don't say it black and white, it's, it's almost in the punctuation of every word that comes out of their mouth. I, myself, me, myself, and I, I built up a, a, a company. I'm the CEO. We're on the stock market. We're ready to exchange on the exchange. I'm great. I came up with a brilliant idea. I brought up old businesses that are failing, and I was able to... Everybody has a brilliant idea. But what's our news? Anius means ain't no misgoyab He doesn't build himself up. He's not bloated. He's not chavitzik. Maxik atzmo kaani. What does that mean, maxik atzmo? He's a wealthy guy and he considers himself an ani. In Yiddish, we'd say, we can design. That's impossible. You've got millions of dollars in the bank and you consider yourself an ani? What is this Anius? That's a Tikkun Bashirus. He says, Be'ezer Ma'amat Jehu Be'ezer Ma'amat Jehu Be'ezer Oshu Be'nini Oshu Oshir Muflok Tamid Machzik Es Atzmok Ani He considers himself an Ani. Bechinas David Amel David Amel says, Ki Ani V'Evyon Anochi Now who is David Amel? David Amel is Malchus Ugdula the Asho Gadol He's wealthy. He's the king at a time in which the Jewish people achieved great wealth. And yet he says about himself, Ki ani fi anochi. I'm constantly an ani. David Amel says, until him, vani ani fi Why? What's the deeper meaning of this? Ki ha'adam ro'ilo lahavin otsem ani yuso bazeha olam. A person has to recognize his poverty in this world. No matter what we do, in the eyes of God, we've never quite successfully fulfilled everything as we should. Again, Shlomo Melch and Koheles. Ain't Sadik Baris a Shayas and Tovlo Yechta. If a tzaddik has to admit his failures and his lack of success, then how much more so we rank and fall citizens? It's the recognition that everything that I have in life is a God-given gift that's gratis. I never deserved it. I never successfully served an Evid as an Evid Hashem. This is a deep concept, Rabbi Say, No matter where we're holding and what we've achieved, we have to realize we haven't even scratched the olive. Chapi Shmaya, <clears throat> in comparison to that which is infinite, there's so much more. Infinite more Alios and ascending and, and creativity. Hashem Yisbar Zonis Aolam Bechazda Kumashkos and Nosein Lechem Lechol Basar Gili Olam Chazda All the Basar Basar representing wealth that we have and that we've received. It's all a matter of Gili Olam Chazda. It's pure Chesed. In Cain, if everything you have and all your possessions, and all the money and the millions in your bank account, it's all a handout from HaKadosh Baruch Hu, B'chesed, then ain't on Yosem Imenu. There's nothing more than an Ani. Ki hu achil delav delay. You see, people think, I created. It's kochi v'yotzim yadi. My money, my possessions, my gold, my silver, it's all a product of my work. No! That's Hashirus of the Sitra Achra. That's where the forces of evil 
are trying to trick you into believing that you deserve to earn all that you have and it's your accomplishments. Name, the exact opposite is true. It's a news. Ukshemesim el libo ha MS. When he finally accepts and embraces the ultimate truth, and he knows that everything he has is a gift of chesed from the Almighty, compassion, then he's in good shape, constantly. And then he'll have what the Mishnah and Ovel says, Ezu Asher, who is a rich person? Who can make a person more happy than the fact that God is bestowing, is handing him such chesed out of love and compassion? And if he reaches this level of das, then God will grant him ashirus. Literal. Material ashirus, because now God knows that he won't misuse it and abuse it and think that he's great and it's all his. God will rely on him that he'll take the song and he'll use it for every single possible thing he can use it for chatzotzros and for, and for Karim Pesach and for Tov and Zimra. Bechinas man de'iu zeir hu He quotes the Zohar here, Mishu katan b'enav, a person who thinks of himself not as great. But you know what? Who am I? I'm not such a big shot. V'yeshlo is tapkus. He'll reach the level of being satisfied and happy with whatever God granted him, whatever gift from the chesed of Hashem. U'mekabel hakol b'ava u'besimcha. Whatever he has, he accepts it with great love and joy. And then, Hashem says to him, Yizke achakach li osher u'gidula, mekimi mi'afrodol, lo shivi yim nidivim. I feel myself as a doll. Poor person, I haven't achieved. Whatever God gave me is a gift, it's a handout from the Almighty. It's mekimi, and God lifts up the doll from Afar. Afar, is the Bechin of Misa, we go back to the offer, but offer is also the source of life. By Yipapayapa, God created us from offer, the offer Toshu. Mikimi me offer. Forget about Misa. Give me life. And God grants us life because he's Mason Atzmo Ka offer. He considers himself with humility. And sincerity, like the offer on the ground. The Achakach, and now God could rely on him. What does it mean that he won't come to Taiva? Taiva's mama means number one. He wants more. You give him a hundred, he wants two hundred. He's never satisfied. Taiva's mama means. He looks at Yenum and he wants to keep up with the Joneses. And he keeps, he's asking himself, why? What is he more brilliant than I am? Why did he make a killing on the stock market? And look at me. You know, I'm trying to eke out a living. So he gets jealous. He gets down on himself. You can have two brothers, twin brothers. One is tremendously successful and the other is a uh, Hasshova failure. And all this is kas, chema, yetzahara, sitra achra, ashiris tituma, in which wealth is the idol. We are worshiping chas v'shalom, mamon, and ashiris. Ki yam bi otem ashiris yachzik atzmo li But this person that God bestows wealth on as a reward because he feels himself to be an ani, and God can trust him that he has completely nulled and voided Kaivas Mamon, is be Otsem Ashiruso, when he reaches success, Yachsik Atzmo Li he still considers himself as a poor person. 
as someone who doesn't deserve these gifts of wealth. Yes, he'll always be happy with what he has. And I know we're running out of time, so I'll just mention this in the next paragraph. Rabbi Nussin speaks about the Rishoyim, who are the exact opposite. They're full of caste. They're angry at God. They're angry at others. They think everything's coming to them. They view themselves as the center of the entire universe, and they want money. And money becomes their idol. And he goes on to speak about matzah in a very beautiful presentation. This, as we open the Seder night, is the lechem of an ani. I feel as an ani. And therefore, I open up my home and I invite guests and I host people and I realize and appreciate that any moment that I have is a God-given gift that I can share with others. And all over the Torah of Breslau, I would almost say the greatest of all mitzvahs in the Breslau philosophy is the mitzvah of stock. And here we see it in this presentation. And later on, again in this piece, Rabbi Nasser is going to connect this to Purim. That's why it's in the Purim, because Chazal say that all the Ashiras of Haman, Yamach Shemo, was transferred over to Mordechai. From Ashiras to Tuma, Lahavdil El Fabdolas to Ashiras to Kedusha, to the leader and the tzaddik of the Jewish people who knows that he's really an Oni, that whatever he has, he doesn't deserve. God gave him, he's satisfied, he realizes it's Chesed Hashem, and he dedicates his Mammon for the benefit of others, of the poor people. Of Klal Yisrael. He wrote some may be his will that we'll all be able to face these great challenges of the chema and the kas and the frustration and the desire for money. The Taivas moment, which has influenced us from all sides. We are so surrounded by that society that puts money as the ultimate idol. And the rich people as the idols that we have to worship. How many times do you open up the news and they tell you who's the richest guy in the world? And he declared bankruptcy and, and he's the richest guy in the world. <coughs> so we should be Zohar Mirz Hashem to face those challenges, to take the Ashiris of Tuma, which is Golus, which is Sitra Achra, that brings us down to Tuma. And transform it by being Mavaria than it sots us because the Ashiras come from a very high point and elevated to Kedusha and dedicate it for the service of man and Hashem. Kani wrote song. Amen. Thank you very, very much for being with me tonight. Thank you, Rabbi. Thank you and Thank have you, a Rabbi. A wonderful Shabbos, Parshas Bo, and think about some of these ideas. They're so profound. They connect so much together in Parshas Bo. Rupert, I, I, I wanted to ask about uh, Tzedakah, if you have a minute. Because sure. at the end, is it from the perspective of I'm Sameach Bechelko, so it's the natural way that I would go ahead and give my money to others, or is it a way to break the klipad, a way to break that Taivas Mamon by giving it away? Well, for sure, on a lower level, it's going to be a battle to overcome the Tivus moment and destroy those klipos that are attacking us from all sides. But on a higher level, it becomes almost natural. Somebody comes over to you and he has a real need and you could help him. I'm not going to take the money for myself. I'm no longer the center of the universe, I no longer say, as we say in Hebrew, Magiali, but rather, these are gifts from Hashem that are meant to be elevated, to share with others. We'll see later on, not tonight, 
It's Salil. Salil has unbelievable abilities. Maybe he was the greatest architect that ever lived. I don't know how many years he went to architectural school. And what does Bitzal do with this? The Pasuk says, Ru'u es Bitzal. Look at Bitzal. Learn from Bitzal. He takes those great talents, those gifts that God bestowed to him, and he uses them and dedicates them for the Mishkan of Hashem to build the Jewish community of Kedusha. Can each and every one of us answer the way Bitzal did? God gave me abilities, gave me possessions, gave me strength. Gave me the possibility of raising children, of teaching Torah, of transmitting Torah. And I took it as a challenge and as a gift from God that could elevate myself, my family, and all the world around me. That's what I think Reb Nussan has in mind when he says that Anius is the tikkun for Ashiris. And I think thus it should be natural. It should come from the depths of our heart. Money is here today and gone tomorrow, so you might as well use it in the right way while you have it. And what are you going to take to the next world? I have, I have a painting. It's actually a sketch from Rembrandt. The reason I'm attached to it is because Rembrandt had a rabbi. He was a devout Christian, but he had a rabbi. His name is Rabbi Nasha ben Yisrael. Maybe one day we'll learn together from his safe. And this is a sketch by Rembrandt of Menashe ben Yisrael. It's the first etching. You know, they did many etchings. But be honest with you, I love it, but I'm not going to take it to the grave. And you know that Sadiqim asked, and this is common, back in Europe, even before World War II, to be buried when they needed the wood because of the laws, whatever it was, to be buried with the wood of their tables. Why the wood of their tables? Because on their tables, they hosted guests. And they brought people together to study, to share the Torah, to sing Zmiros, to appreciate a Shabbos meal, to elevate themselves, to make Shaduchim to create friendships, to undermine loneliness. All these were achieved at the table. And they wanted to go up to Shemayim with the table. Bury me in my table. Cut it down. Make wood planks out of it. This was a minnow. What do we have in the next world? We have Torah and Mice and Tov. So why put the emphasis on making money and who's rich, and who has more money, and who's the richest guy in America today, in the world, in Dubai, I don't know where. And look what a, what a business I built up. I know a man who built a tremendous business. Only one problem. Never. He has no children. No one to inherit his business. So it was a great experience. You know, he spent his whole life building up a business, a beautiful business. But he's not going to take it to the grave, and he can't even bequeath it to his children because he has no children. It's, it's very painful for me to talk about this. I happen to know this man very well. Anyway, let's, let's uh, we'll, we'll call it a night now. I, I think we, uh, you know, I'm here at my, my good buddy's house here, Alan Dubin. The internet in my house is down. And it's only in this chus of the Dubins. Alan and his wonderful Rebetzin, Riva, and Yaakov helped me out here. I don't know if you've met the Dubins, but people that you want to meet. I can talk about Alan from now until doomsday. In high school, he won a Westinghouse finalist. Only nine people worldwide are chosen as finalists. And in the yeshiva that I went to, which is called MTA, Yeshiva University for High School for Boys, you'll still go into the office and you'll see Alan J. Dubin's plaque that he won as a Westinghouse. He went on to MIT. In two years' time, he finished you know, on MIT after do a thesis, an undergraduate thesis for a bachelor's degree. And he combined physics 
math and computers. And in a weak moment, he's a big honor. He told me that they are still using his thesis in MIT to this day. I have two friends that are geniuses, but he's the top. But they're big Bali Chesed. And when I asked them if I could use their study just for this year, they were jumping for joy. They were so happy that they could help me facilitate this because otherwise I wouldn't have been able to take this year and give this year because I didn't have access to Zoom. All right. Anyway, should all be well. And please have a great, great Shabbos and keep in touch. Thank you so much. Well,